Fabulous. So now it is my great pleasure to welcome our three speakers or our three presenters, um, Astrid, Heaven and uh, Salama, Salamawit. <laughs> um, Astrid is in Denmark and uh, Salamawit and Heaven are in Ethiopia and they are currently having the occasional problem with connections um, and sound. So we will just go for it and see what happens. Um, they work for the Maternity Foundation, and I'm really interested in listening to this because uh, it uses a, a hybrid method of educating, um, and they're going to tell us all about it. So over to you to introduce yourselves, Astrid. Thank you very much, Linda. So, yeah, my name is Astrid Grunberg and I'm a research and, and learning officer in Maternity Foundation based in Copenhagen. And today I'm presenting with Heaven and Salama. We will see if Heaven's sound works now and then she will start the presentation. And Salama would, will be with us to uh, respond to questions on the side and also take part in the discussion at the end. I think we are still having some issues with the sound coming through from heaven in, in Addis. Um, so I will continue and then hopefully the sound will improve along the way. Yes, do go ahead and try every so often, heaven, yeah. and we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> I think there's a delay as well. I, I have a feeling there's a delay. Okay, uh, well, we see, and so today we're presenting uh, to you some of the findings from this ENC Now uh, feasibility and effectiveness pilot study that we did uh, of four different training approaches of the same ENC Now content, which was the content developed by Lerdale and AAP in the light of uh, COVID-19, taking the, the traditional ENC content and adapting it for an online format. Uh, and the Maternity Foundation implemented these four different training modalities in Ethiopia. Um, so yes, the core content was the ENC now content. Evan, are we hearing you now? I don't know if you are. Yes. yes? Yeah. Please proceed. Thank you very much. And uh, sorry for the disruption. So, um, and thank you Astrid for filling up for me. Yeah, uh, we are here to present uh, for you today about the ANC you know, uh, pilot project we were having with uh, larger global health and AAP. Um, it's a, a curricula adopted from uh, online training uh, developed by these two um, huge organizations and it focuses on the essential newborn care uh, management. So management of birth asphyxia, including the um, BMB exercises. So uh, the uh, the this the ANC online training was conducted from um, May to October 2021 um, in um, Ethiopia. It is in one of the regions, the Amhara region, which is nearby to Addis Ababa, called uh, Deborah Braha. And we were conducting this pilot study in uh, 18 uh, health facilities. And uh, in total, we were having uh, 59 um, participants who took part on this uh, uh, ANC Now uh, pilot. So um, the training approach was a blended learning with uh, an online lecture and uh, on-site exercise with the on-site facilitators and clinical practice. And at the same time, uh, we used the virtual uh, methods like um, Telegram to do exercises. So the materials and tools we use during this uh, the ANC approach is the online ANC slide decks, and there there was a flip chart uh, presentation used um, and the um, peer to peer clinical practice uh, on site, and then uh, the neonatal mannequins from Labdal Global Health were used to do the simulation practices and safe delivery application for maternity foundation was also integrated when the trainings were be, uh, being provided and also when uh, the participants are routinely exercising on their uh, 
daily routine life. So the facilitators were, uh, there were two types of uh, facilitators, the TOT trained remote master trainers. They were trained by uh, larger global heads and uh, TOT trained on-site facilitators, which were also uh, trained by the master trainers. So we have of two types, one who can facilitate in their own site and the others were from um, remotely or virtually by the master trainers. So uh, this is the ENC now um, training or the pilot training has uh, four approaches. We uh, were dividing these uh, facilities and uh, the healthcare professionals in four categories. Um, and uh, we were implementing this. Um, the first two, they were using the traditionally structured uh, one day ANC course, like a full day uh, ANC course, which was delivered by the master trainers online. And uh, it was supported by the on site facilitators in uh, who were present in the facilities. And then this one day, uh, the, the longer training, the traditional type of training was supported by uh, a, three, uh, a three man self uh, directed learning, and which, will, uh, which was also uh, encouraged and facilitated through the virtual approach, like uh, on a Telegram group. They were given uh, some exercises to conduct and then they were sharing for the larger group and the other facilities who are also uh, a team member in the Telegram group. So these exercises were uh, conducted and posted. So this uh, approach was used for the first two groups, uh, the ARM1 and for uh, ARM1 and ARM3. And then uh, the difference between ARM1 and ARM3 uh, was like uh, one of the ARMs I mean, ARM1 and ARM2. ARM1 uh, uses the STD integrated uh, slide decks and also uh, on their clinical uh, practice, like the three months uh, self-directed learning was also supported by the safe delivery application. And uh, when we come to the ARM, the second ARM, they use the longer approach, but the safe delivery application was not uh, integrated. So when we come uh, to the <coughs> third and for the arms, uh, arms three and arm four are delivered the ANC course and then a spaced out approach. Like, uh, the, the portion of the trainings were uh, divided into uh, five, and then um, every two weeks they uh, took a session which will last like uh, moderately three hours. And then um, for arms three, the safe delivery application was also integrated throughout the. Um, course time and for ARM4 the safe delivery application was not uh, integrated and this also the second um, I mean the third and the fourth arms were also given exercises to uh, post on the telegram group and like everybody was motivated or throughout the three months time period when they uh, conduct uh, when we were conducting the, this ANC pilot. So we were trying to see two things. One, the the effect of, like between the spaced out trainings and the older method, like the one time longer training. And also the second thing we were trying to see is the integration of the safe delivery application in the retention of knowledge and uh, skill for these uh, four groups. So the, the study design is a, a mixed approach. Um, we were trying to see the feasibility and effectiveness of uh, the approach. And we use qualitative and uh, quantitative tools. So <clears throat> at the start of the pilot study, a background survey uh, for the participants characteristic like uh, was conducted baseline and in line follow uh, up assessments were also <clears throat> conducted. Um, they were assessed for <clears throat> sorry knowledge on the ANC and their uh, skills was measured by the OSCIs conducted by the on-site facilitators using uh, the back and mask ventilation and a self-administered um, confidence assessment test was also uh, filled out by the participants. Uh, this was used as a quantitative tool and beside 
this OSCIS and knowledge and skill assessment, we were also having a rapid uh, facility uh, review at the follow-up time to see the improvement or the changes which have been brought after the training uh, based on the skill and knowledge of the participants. So as a qualitative tool, uh, feedback survey with participants and the facilitators, in-depth interview for uh, selected like sample uh, participants and a focus group discussion with the on-site facilitators was conducted and uh, the health facility managers were also assessed for a rapid feedback survey with them to see what they have observed after the training and this um, follow-up study. So this was the tools which we used to assess. So when uh, we come to the participant char characteristic, <clears throat> uh, as I was mentioning, we were having 59 midwives uh, and uh, other health workers from these 18 uh, health facilities in uh, Northern uh, Shoa. So uh, when you see the um, majority of them were like midwives and um, from the 59, 58 were midwives and one clinical nurse involved in the uh, at the baseline assessment. 70% uh, of them were female and 30, may, uh, 30 were male. Uh, when we see the average age, uh, age for the participants was 27, with the minimum of 20, 22 years and a maximum of 40 years of the participants. And from uh, the 59 participants, 68% of them had a smartphone, which was um, used to, to install the safe delivery application and uh, they were uh, using throughout the time. So when you see the, the clinical year of experience for this participant, it ranges from um, uh, one year up to like 10 plus years. So majority of them were having experience like two to five years, which will account 47% of the uh, participants then followed by five to 10 years experience, which accounts 28%, and um, around 4% of them have um, 10 plus years experience, and 13% of the, our participants were having uh, around one year, less than one year uh, experience in their clinical practice. So um, the other thing at the baseline, uh, which we assessed was for, trainings they took uh, in the past six months before our uh, study starts and 21% uh, of uh, the participants respond that um, they, they did a training uh, priorly, but mostly it was uh, family planning and uh, other trainings, but not the ANC training. And uh, only one participant responded that they have a remote training um, history or experience before and none of them had um, a training experience at the facility which was conducted on site in the facility in the past uh, 30 days prior to our baseline assessment or our um, study begins yeah um, on the retention of our uh, participants um, mostly we say we were successful on retaining the participants but um, some connectivity issue was a challenge uh, for uh, Wi-Fi connectivity was a challenge uh, mentioned by the participants and um, at the beginning of the study we were having 50, um, 50 some pa participants in the in the line uh, it declined to 50 and in the follow-up time uh, which was conducted after three months we were having uh, 44 pa participants so there were a little dropouts and when the reason for dropout of participants were assessed, mostly it was um, because the participants were transferred to other health facilities where we uh, were not conducting the assessment or this pilot study was not part of. And uh, the other um, bigger reason for leaving or not participating in the follow-up time was uh, because of a uh, maternity leave. Some of the female participants gave birth and they were in maternity leave. So from baseline to in line, we lost uh, seven participants due to these reasons. And then 
from in the line to follow up six participants uh, were lost so um, at the end of the follow up there was around 44 uh, participants in this uh, study so uh, was it feasible to implement all the uh, approach and the other uh, key points will be discussed by my colleague Astrid. Thank you for your time. Over to you, Astrid. Thank you very much, Helen. And how happy I am, I am that the connection came back. And um, so I will share with you some of the results from the, the data collection that we have done across different participants in the project. Um, and first, we're sharing a bit from the master trainer's perspectives, uh, where we found that it is uh, possible and feasible to deliver the remote uh, version of the ENC training, both in the short version and the spaced out uh, version. However, it was observed that the, the short and intensive full day uh, is can be challenging because it requires a lot from the learners that they need to absorb all the content in one day. And a full day of uh, Zoom trainings can be really tiring and there's a higher risk of losing the participants' attention. Um, on the other hand, we found that the spaced out sessions worked quite well, but maybe the five sessions were too much and, and we'll have to really think about with, uh, refining how they were spread out into to different sessions. Um, the Safe Delivery app was integrated into the package and, and that was found feasible from the perspective of the master trainers. They were able to integrate relevant videos from the Safe Delivery app and also um, guide uh, participants to do certain exercises in the app and it provided this bridge between the, the online training and also the self-directed learning. Um, we also learned that well despite having tested the internet connectivity in Ethiopia we know there are certain challenges and sometimes on the day it just doesn't work very well for a while as we also saw today um, and it's important to, to really try to test it as well as possible before and also have the backup options which for this training, the, the very good facilitators were, in, were a key part because they enabled some kind of continuation even when the, the connectivity challenges were really massive. And what was also observed by the master trainers is that it was important to ensure that the healthcare workers in the facilities actually have dedicated time off to participate, whereas it was put out for the facilities to decide how they wanted to participate but some uh, healthcare workers or midwives had to both kind of attend to the case flow at the facility and try to participate at the same time which led to some interruption in the training participation. We had included the self-directed learning component to introduce this mi mixed uh, training modality uh, approach and had a, a very detailed weekly schedule had been developed by the master trainers to support and, and reinforce the learning that had taken place in the session, so in the content. Um, and what we found when we tried to, to have a look at whether there was high participation or not, we found that it varies quite a bit. Um, the, at the, each of the arms, the participants were requested to share back in the group when they had conducted uh, the exercises and share videos or images of them doing the drills and the like. Um, and what we saw across the groups is that there was huge uh, variation in is in some of the facilities. They didn't share any activities and in others it was up to 70% of all the activities. Um, and we did find that within the groups where there was high participation, initially it seemed to be contagious and more and more facilities decided to join and, and share back some, some of their experiences. Um, but it was also a challenge maybe to maintain the participation level over the full three month period. Um, what we also learned from the interviews here is, is that the internet connectivity was also discour a discouraging factor uh, because participants said they were not able to upload images or videos and there we should uh, for next time, also think about how just to encourage participation in, in written form. Um, but generally, from those who participated, they found the messages very helpful and, and not annoying because it helped them uh, stay on track with the learning and it motivated them to help uh, to continue working on the exercises. And, and some also mentioned that they continued practicing and doing redoing the exercises until they got them perfectly well and felt that they wanted to share them in the group. Um, and we, they were also, the feedback was also that they were helpful in terms of 
of uh, reminding you to continue doing the exercises which helped retain both the knowledge and skills. Um, at the end line, we collected feedback from the participants about their training experience. And what we found was that generally across the both, both approaches, there was a quite a high level of satisfaction with the training approach and the tools. And for many, it was a, a novel experience. They had not participated in a, in a remotely delivered training before. And also found that the mix between the online training and, and the offline exercises uh, and drills at the facilities, as well as the weekly exercises was a good uh, combination. And the safe delivery app was also well received by the two arms where it was integrated. And they find it helpful that they can review the videos and, and the clinical practice cards at their own time. Um, for extra revision. Um, there, it was again also emphasized this challenge about timing and, and that it was challenging to manage case, caseload whilst also uh, taking time off to participate. So that would be something that needs focus uh, for our next training. Um, there was a dissatisfaction expressed with the per diem because at the, receiving the training at the facility came with a, a, an at facility per diem, which is quite different from the per diem sometimes received when going uh, outside the facility to participate in training. Um, and that was re also mentioned uh, quite a few times, but at the end, after the training had, had been completed and the participants had seen the benefit, they say they would uh, also like to receive this type of training another time because they found it quite um, helpful. And what some one participant also pointed out that it was a very inclusive way of receiving the training because everyone or several healthcare uh, workers at the facility, midwives participated, whereas other times it's a training that takes place outside the facility and only uh, the senior midwife or uh, the facility manager goes to receive the training. Um, again, we however also heard that some would still prefer offsite training to be able to concentrate fully. So there's still some unsolved uh, issues. Um, we interviewed uh, both facility managers and uh, facilitators, and largely they, their, their feedback echoes both that of the, uh, the participants and also the master trainers. And they found that it was a, a relevant and, and well-structured training, um, and that the tools and, and the experience was generally good. Uh, the issues around uh, Wi-Fi interruptions or lack of smartphones among the participants were observed as challenges um, and, and also the training during work hours. Um, but it's worth bearing in mind that tablets were delivered to each of the facilities to both allow the participants to connect during the trainings, but also to do uh, exercises on a continued basis using the facility tablets to try to bridge uh, the issue of, of individual smartphone ownership. So when we try to explore, we have a, a small uh, group, and as you, as Heaven pointed out, there was a drop in participation. So our results are, are indicative, but um, we'd like to, to if we have the possibility, to scale up uh, to as, explore the results at a larger scale. Um, but what we see from the the assessments that were done at baseline, endline, and follow up is that generally there was a overall an improvement in the knowledge. A quite a high one from the baseline to the end line, where we saw that in the at the baseline around 30% uh, passed the ENC knowledge test following the existing criteria, and that was up to 70% um, at the end line. Uh, and our results indicate a further improvement um, at the follow up to 80% who passed the the knowledge assessment. Um, there are some variations across the arms. But generally, there was a, an improvement from baseline to end line, quite high. Uh, and in some cases, a further improvement for the follow up, except for an arm one. But that's also a particular because we faced some challenges on the ground and a different team of, of assessors or facilitators went to do the follow up assessment uh, also at a, at a delayed time due to um, uh, insecurities on the ground. So we had to delay the whole process. Um, but generally, this, uh, there was an, a, a strong improvement in the knowledge from baseline to end, and overall it was uh, maintained at the follow-up, which for us is, is something we keep in mind, because often we observe a drop in the retention of knowledge when we do a follow-up three to six months later. Uh, that is what we've experienced in a lot of other training um, initiatives we have conducted uh, in, in Ethiopia. 
Um, what we also saw is that there was a positive effect on the confidence. We tried to assess confidence in, in ENC related tasks. Um, and there was also a, 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 overall a significant increase from the baseline to end line. And again, we saw this uh, sustained at the follow up. Um, and one participant also kind of puts it into perspective and explains how they, when they faced an asphyxiated newborn before, there was fear and it was difficult to resuscitate. But now the, the training has helped them manage complications. So that's very promising. Um, similarly, we saw with the skills an increase and the high retention. Um, and we saw again this shift from around 30% passing the, the OSCE B case scenario of the ENC uh, course content up to 75% passing the skill scenario. And 75% uh, of the participants, uh, yeah, well, passed at both endline and follow up. And also when we checked the BASC, we used the bag and mask ventilation check uh, and those nine steps in that assessment, we also saw an increase from around 43% uh, overall to being able to uh, conduct this uh, bag and mask ventilation check at all the steps up to 68 and, and at the follow up 70%. Um, so generally uh, this high retention um, at the follow up level. Again, with some variations across the arms that will where working on exploring a bit further, looking not across all four arms, but really about into the results of the short and intense training versus the spaced out uh, training. The training took place at the facilities um, and we are we're quite, uh, we're quite interested and uh, excited about these results where we asked at the follow-up whether any kind of exercises had been done or training uh, initiatives by the participants at the facilities in the 30 days uh, prior to the follow-up, which is a, a well way after the core training had ended. Um, and what we see when we ask that question is that in, there was a high well, increase from no one responding that they had done any exercise at the facility prior to the baseline. It was up to between 25 and 93% and of the respondents across the facilities um, who said so at the follow-up point. Um, and one participant also explains that they took what they learned in the training and they trained two other midwives. Uh, and for the nurse, they also demonstrated and showed them how to resuscitate. Uh, because in case of a work overload, anyone should be able to help the babies um, breathe and, or resuscitate them. So they took what they learned in the training and passed it on to other colleagues at their facilities, which is an encouraging uh, and surprising result for us from this training. Um, and when we, in the interviews, explored whether this training had, had uh, been practical and they had been able to put the knowledge and skills taught into practice, uh, this is an important point for us because we are aware that sometimes it, uh, the knowledge and skills uh, learned in a, in a training doesn't necessarily carry over into practice. So we spent a bit of time exploring this um, and generally there was uh, feedback that it was very yeah, practical and they were able to take what they learned and put it into uh, to practice and, and act in case of uh, complications. Um, and one participant also explains that we now do the job, manage, manage asphyxia without any difficulty. And the on-site facilitators also mentioned that they saw this practice improve uh, during their repeated visits. Um, and the facility managers again also echoed this that they say that their, their practice had and performance had changed and improved uh, as a result of the training. Um, so we'll just jump to the conclusion before we'd love to hear also from all the participants listening in today about their experiences with remote trainings. Uh, what we found is that, the, that it's, it's possible uh, to do the remote uh, version of the ENC now training uh, with the self-directed learning component, but it requires quite a bit of uh, preparation. Um, and it's uh, very important that there's dedicated time off for the learners uh, and good internet connectivity or very good alternatives in case the connection breaks. Um, and we found that trying to establish this community of practice uh, on Telegram, which would be a supporting component to the training and was intended to help uh, reiterate uh, training and, and increase retention through a social learning experience, um, was 
challenging to maintain throughout, but it's clear that some participants found it very useful and helpful and, and benefited from it a lot. So we are trying to further explore what, what were the key factors that made it work very well in some groups and maybe a little bit less well in other groups. We found that the safe delivery app integration was feasible um, and could serve as a, as a helpful add-on, especially because it's, uh, it works completely well offline. So when, some, when the connectivity was challenged and some of the online tools for this training didn't work, the safe delivery app uh, was still functioning. Um, the spaced out trainings were well received by many participants, but we found it's necessary to refine the, the session structure a little bit. And overall, the results also point towards a, a, a higher retention from the spaced out trainings, but this is also something we are exploring further. Um, and we learned that it's important to address the question around expectations, uh, per diem expectations upfront. Uh, and explore other ways to incentivize uh, participation. One option that we discussed but wasn't included in this training was to ensure that CPD points are, are accredited. Um, this is something we have achieved in other projects and initiatives in Ethiopia and something we'll also explore going forward. Um, we overall see that the remote trainings can effectively increase knowledge and skills and whether it's the short and intensive combined with the self-directed learning or the the space out combined with the self-directed learning, the results are promising. And overall, the retention at three months uh, follow-up is quite high. Um, and then we have all this feedback that points towards a very uh, interesting and sustained change, both in terms of maybe we maybe there's an indication that it's supported establishing a bit of a community of practice at the facilities where, yeah, with the mannequins and with the tools at the facilities, the, the participants and the midwives are also empowered to pass on what they learned and, and train other colleagues. Um, and that because it took place at the facilities and it was very practical, it's been possible to, to implement uh, the changes in the practice straight away. So with that, I think we'd like to yeah, hear uh, from all the, all the colleagues who are listening in, uh, if they have had other experiences and what their thoughts are. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, um, Astrid and um, Heaven. Could I um, hand this stage over to my colleague, Juliet, who is uh, shadowing me as facilitator in this session and she'll help with the questions. I'm going to put a question straight away in the chat. Over to you, Juliet. Thank, thank you so much. And thank you for a really interesting presentation. Um, yeah, it's there's so much to absorb in quite a short time. Um, but it was really interesting. So Linda's question, I'll just read it out for, for everybody. Um, have you considered teaching these skills to the whole multidisciplinary team, for example, the doctors as well, um, which might help build uh, team build in uh, well, Linda reckons it might do that? Had you had you considered that? Astrid or Heaven? Pardon, uh, can you repeat the question, please? Sorry. Repeat the question, yes. Had, have you considered teaching the skills to the whole multidisciplinary team, so including the doctors as well, for example, um, to try and help build the sense of t a team? Okay. Um, so this pilot study, uh, as we were earlier mentioning, was conducted in uh, health centers. So in those health uh, centers, there are the nurses, the midwives and um, health officers who are working in the facility. And um, this uh, pilot or the training uh, includes every, uh, everyone who is working in the MCH department, who are in close contact with the mothers and um, the newborns. So they were uh, taking part on the uh, training. So yes, uh, actually there were no doctors in the facilities, but the rest of the team who was available uh, and working in the health facilities was included. And um, the peer-to-peer -peer, um, learning session uh, after the cascading of training by maternity, maternity Foundation and with the remote facilitators, they were uh, transferring their skill and knowledge for their colleagues in the health facilities, if I answer your question correctly. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yes, yes. So you, it was. It was including everybody who was there, although you didn't happen to have doctors in in the health facilities. Lovely. Thank you. Um, there's a question from Sheila Clone. Morning, Sheila. <laughs> um, I know Sheila from of old. Um, so Sheila's asking, what role did the on-site facilitators play, and was this linked to the training times only, or throughout the first three months? Okay. What is the role of the on-site facilitator? So um, the role of the on-site facilitators is uh, uh, to co-facilitate or train the um, midwives or the healthcare professionals who were part of the training and the, in the health facility. Uh, it, it was a two type of approach as I was mentioning. So remotely uh, via Zoom, we were providing uh, the training with the slide decks. And then uh, these on-site facilitators are present in the facility. They are uh, from a nearby other facilities, hospitals and uh, teaching institutions, uh, and uh, they are master trainers also. So they were um, supporting the team on um, one, facilitating the training. Uh, the second is when there is a clinical practice or when uh, hands-on skill is involved, uh, like, even though we are uh, following virtually, they are there um, in the in the facility to assist or coach the participants on uh, conducting the skills or the practical uh, sessions. And then uh, they are also uh, giving them uh, feedback for what they were doing in the facility. And they are also part of the uh, Telegram uh, group to motivate and encourage the participants uh, to conduct all the skill assessments, like, uh, I mean, uh, skill practices they are conducting and then uh, sharing for the larger group. And they were um, supporting them throughout uh, the three months the process, not only, only in the actual training time, but also uh, throughout the time where we were conducting the assessment and the whole uh, pilot. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so they, they did have an ongoing role for sure and a, a sort of encouraging role as well to, to keep, keep, keep the motivation going, it sounds like, from what you're saying. Um, yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. One thing I forget that b beside the encouraging role and the uh, coaching role that they have, also when we were um, conducting the skills assessment in the baseline and the, at the end line in the follow up time, also they were involved like to. Uh, do the skill assessment to see the improvement uh, pre and uh, post skill assessment was also conducted by the on-site facilitators for the participants. Okay, so, so was that the same facilitator throughout the whole um, trial, as it were? Was it the same one who did it at the beginning and, and, and partway through and at the end? Or did, the, did you have different facilitators? Uh, Yes, so um, at the beginning of the uh, training or when we start, like mm -hmm. for the four arms, we have uh, 18 facilities. So for these 18 facilities, one uh, on-site facilitator was assigned for each one. And um, this on-site facilitator um, like continues throughout uh, the time, like similar facilitators. Yes was used to do the baseline assessment, the in-line assessment in, uh, in the training times, even for the interrupted uh, arm three and, and arm four trainings. Like when we do five substations of the training, similar uh, facilitators were uh, visiting the health facility to do. And each group has its own facilitator, not to mix up and, um, uh, you know, to have uh, a, a proper follow-up for each one. We are trying to minimize the bias uh, by retaining the facilitators at each facility. Okay, thank you. Um, she, Sheila's made a comment uh, in the chat there talking about the challenge of being able to build in sustainable strategies. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was wondering whether you, you felt that the um, Safe Delivery app was part of that. Um, approach to try and, you know, it was a sort of resource that was ongoing, as you say, both able to be used online and offline. 
um, to kind of cement learning in a much longer term way. Is, is that why the app was developed? Uh, yeah, um, with, with your question, you have also given the, a little bit of the answer. The safe delivery application is um, a tool which uh, is developed by Maternity Foundation, which uh, can assist um, a, a healthcare professionals, not only midwives, but any um, skilled birth attendants uh, on like developing their skill and uh, retain, for retaining their knowledge. So it has different uh, top, uh, topics, like there are videos, action cards, practical procedures, and there is a mind learning session, which they can uh, also be certified by uh, answering, and question, um, answering a questions, uh, which is um, in the app, and at the end they can be certified. This was also part of the, in the pilot, where the safe delivery application uh, was integrated for the two of arms and uh, that um, is also one um, way to keep the sustainability and the other is uh, these uh, four arms as i uh, as we were earlier mentioning they have a telegram group for each uh, arm and then uh, in the in, at, at the first stage the telegram group was used to communicate with, uh, among the arms so each arm like have four to five has the facilities, different health facilities. So they share experience in the, from their facilities. And then uh, participants who are uh, working in that facility can be added at any time. Uh, even they are keeping the uh, Telegram group until now, even though the pilot project has ended, we are also uh, in that group. And we can see like uh, when people are trying to motivate themselves and uh, share their experience, some of them they post uh, their uh, certificate when they finish their uh, uh, my learning from the safe delivery application. Some of them, they post like uh, they have managed some assisted um, baby and they uh, are overcoming the challenge from uh, what they get from the training and the like. So uh, for retaining uh, or sustainability, the Telegram group is helping and the other, the safe delivery application, they have it on their hand and the smart, uh, with the smartphones. So uh, that is uh, for sure helping very much on uh, retaining the knowledge, skill, and uh, also the, uh, the program. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think um, we probably need to finish because well, our time is nearly up. I'm sure we could carry on this discussion for quite some time. What an amazing project.